Namaskar. Dear learners, the topic for today's session is UNESCO World Heritage Sites of India. The objectives of this session are to understand the concept of World Heritage Sites, learn in detail about the cultural World Heritage Sites of India. Now what is heritage? Heritage is our legacy from the past, what we live with today and what we pass on to future generations. Our cultural and natural heritage are both irreplaceable sources of life and inspiration. What is world heritage? World heritage is the designation for places on earth that are of outstanding universal value to humanity and as such have been inscribed on the world heritage list to be protected for future generations to appreciate and enjoy. Places as diverse and unique as the pyramids of Egypt the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, Galapagos Islands in Ecuador, the Taj Mahal in India, the Grand Canyon in the US, the Acropolis in Greece are examples of the 1007 natural and cultural places inscribed on the World Heritage List to date. Now who gives the World Heritage status? The United Nations Educational scientific and cultural organization seeks to encourage the identification, protection and preservation of cultural and natural heritage around the world considered to be of outstanding value to humanity. This is embodied in an international treaty called the Convention Concerning the Protection of the World Cultural and Natural Heritage adopted by UNESCO in 1972. What is the criteria for inscription as World Heritage Site? To be included on the World Heritage List, sites must be of outstanding universal value and meet at least 1 out of 10 selection criteria. These criteria are explained in the operational guidelines for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention which besides the text of the convention is the main working tool on world heritage. The criteria are regularly revised by the committee to reflect the evolution of the world heritage concept itself. Until the end of 2004, World Heritage Sites were selected on the basis of six cultural and four natural criteria. With the adoption of the revised operational guidelines for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention, only one set of 10 criteria exists. Let us now discuss the cultural heritage sites of India. Agra Fort. It is located in the state of Uttar Pradesh in Agra district. Date of inscription is 1983. It is a 16th century Mughal monument known as the Red Fort of Agra. This powerful fortress of red sandstone encompasses within its 2.5 kilometer long enclosure walls the imperial city of the Mughal rulers. It was many palaces, uh, mosques and other buildings. It was constructed by the third Mughal emperor Akbar on the remains of an ancient site known as Badalgarh. Knowing the significance of its location, Akbar built the fort to make it the main residence for the Mughals. The fort remained as the main residence of the emperors belonging to the Mughal dynasty until the year 1638. The fort houses numerous impressive structures like the Jahangir Mahal, Khas Mahal, Diwane Khas, Diwane Aam, Machi Bhavan and Moti Masjid. In 1638, the capital of the Mughal dynasty was moved from Agra to Delhi 
causing the Agra fort to lose its status as the main residence of the Mughal emperors. The fort is a semicircular on plan. It is surrounded by a 21.4 meter high fortification wall. Double ramparts have been provided here with broad massive circular bastions at regular intervals. There are four gates on its four sides. One of the gates was called Khijri gate, the water gate, which opens to the river front where ghats were provided. The fort has survived through the onslaught of time, nature and men. The fort spreads over an area of about 94 acres of land. At present, there exist more than two dozens of monuments in the fort. Out of the four gates, the Delhi gate and the Lahore gate are the most prominent ones. The Lahore gate was later renamed as Amar Singh gate. Abul Fazl, a court historian of Akbar, records that 5,000 buildings were built here beautifully in Bengali and Gujarati style. Most of these buildings have now disappeared. Bricks form the base of Agra fort structure. Red sandstone was brought all the way from Rajasthan and that was laid on the external surfaces. Back then, the entire fort was built using the red sandstone. This appearance of the fort underwent a major change during the reign of Shah Jahan. Unlike his grandfather, Shah Jahan loved the beauty of white marble. Hence, he destroyed many structures within the fort only to rebuild them using white marble. Aurangzeb imprisoned Shah Jahan, his own father, in the fort for eight years until he died in 1666 and was buried in Taj Mahal. Shah Jahan was made to spend his final days in the Musamman Burj at the Agra fort, which was built by him. Important structures inside the Agra fort are palaces, halls, royal baths, mosques, gardens and gates. Hardly 30 Mughal buildings have survived on the southern eastern side. Babur's Bauli is step well built by uh, Babur. Ajanta Caves. They are located in the state of Maharashtra in Aurangabad district. The date of inscription is 1983. In the early 19th century, the long buried Ajanta Caves were discovered unknowingly by a British army officer. At this juncture, the beautiful sculpted caves that were lying deep within the Shayadri hills above the Vagora river came into the site. The cave temples are sited in a horseshoe shaped cliff where Vagora is flowing at the bottom. Cut out of rocks, the Ajanta caves were carved out in two different phases with a gap of more or less four centuries. The caves made in the first phase date from the second and first centuries BC, whereas the caves of the second phase are said to have been made by the Vaktakas and the Guptas, that is 5th and 6th centuries AD. Each cave comprises carvings and paintings representing the incidents of Buddha's life, Bodhisattva and the Jataks. The painting and sculptures of Ajanta, considered masterpieces of Buddhist religious art, Ajanta cave temples are dedicated to Lord Buddha. The caves are 30 in number. All the 30 caves are divided into Chetyagras and Viharas. The cave number 9, 10, 19, 26 and 29 are known as Chetyagras which were used as prayer halls. The remaining caves are Viharas that is the residences for the monks. The caves are numbered as per their present axis from the main entrance and were not erected in the same order. These caves were used by the followers and students of Buddhism. During the time of their stay, they adorned the caves with their outstanding architectural skills and artistic paintings. The next 
uh, World Heritage Site is Archaeological Site of Nalanda Mahavira at Nalanda in Bihar. The date of inscription is 2016. It comprises the archaeological remains of a monastic and scholastic institution dating from the 3rd century BCE to the 13th century CE. It includes stoops, shrines, viharas and important artworks in stucco, stone and metal. Nalanda stands out as the most ancient university of the Indian subcontinent. It engaged in the organized transmission of knowledge over an uninterrupted period of 800 years. The historical development of the site testifies to the development of Buddhism into a religion and the flourishing of monastic and educational traditions. The patronage of the Gupta Empire saw this Mahavihara prosper during 5th and 6th century as also during the reign of Emperor Harsh of Kannauj. However, tantric developments of Buddhism during the Pala rulers saw an eventual decline of Nalanda. Students and scholars from places like China, Central Asia, Korea and Tibet studied in this great Vihara that taught Mahayan, Hinayan, Sanskrit grammar, Ved, Samakya among others. Eminent pilgrim monks like Hyun Sang, I Singh from East Asia visited this place in the 7th century. Buddhist monuments at Sachi in Madhya Pradesh, the date of inscription 1989. On a hill overlooking the plain and about 40 kilometers from Bhopal, the site of Sachi comprises a group of Buddhist monuments, stoops, monolithic pillars, palaces, temples and monasteries. All monuments are in different state of conservation, most of which date back to the 2nd and 1st century BC. It is the oldest Buddhist sanctuary in existence and was a major Buddhist center in India until the 12th century AD. Champaner Pavagad Archaeological Park. It is located in the state of Gujarat and was inscribed in the year 2004. The Champaner Pavagad Archaeological Park is a concentration of largely unexcavated archaeological, historic and living cultural heritage properties cradled in an impressive landscape which includes prehistoric chalcolithic sites. The Champaner Pavagad Archaeological Park with its ancient Hindu architecture, temples and special water retaining installations together with its religious, military and architectural structures dating back to the regional capital city built by Mahmud Begda in the 16th century represents cultures which have disappeared. The structures represent a perfect blend of Hindu mausoleum architecture mainly in the great mosque Jama Masjid which was a model for later mosque architecture in India. This special style comes from the significant period of regional sultanates. The site also includes among other vestiges, fortifications, palaces, religious buildings, residential precincts, agricultural structures and water installations from the 8th to 14th centuries. The Champaner Pavagad Archaeological Park is a place of worship and continuous pilgrimage for Hindu believers. The Kalika Mata Temple on top of Pavagad Hill is considered to be an important shrine attracting large number of pilgrims throughout the year. The site is the only complete and unchanged Islamic pre-Mughal city. Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus formerly Victoria Terminus. It is located in the city of Mumbai in the state of Maharashtra and was inscribed in 2004. The Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, formerly known as Victoria Terminus Station in Mumbai, is an outstanding example of Victorian Gothic revival architecture in India, blended with themes deriving from Indian traditional architecture. The building designed by the British architect F. W. Stevens became the symbol of Bombay as the Gothic city and the major international mercantile port of India. 
The terminal was built over 10 years starting in 1878 according to a high Victorian Gothic design based on late medieval Italian models. Its remarkable stone dome, turrets, pointed arches and eccentric ground plan are close to traditional Indian palace architecture. It is an outstanding example of the meeting of two cultures as British architects worked with Indian craftsmen, churches and convents of Goa. They are located in the state of Goa and were inscribed into World Heritage Site in year 1986. Churches and convents of Goa exerted great influence in the 16th, 18th centuries on the development of architecture, sculpture and painting by spreading forms of Manolan, Mannerist and Baroque art throughout the countries of Asia where Catholic missions were established. In so doing, they illustrate the work of missionaries in Asia. The Portuguese explorer Alfonso de Albuquerque conquered Goa in 1510 and the Portuguese ruled the territory until 1961. The colony of Goa which has its centre in Old Goa became the capital of the vast Eastern Portuguese Empire sharing the same civic privileges as Lisbon. In 1635, the successive waves of Europeans brought about the inevitable decline of Goa. In 1542, the Jesuits who were driven by the ardour of medieval crusaders arrived in the city and Francis Xavier, one of the founders of the Society of Jesus, rapidly became the patron saint of Goa. The churches in Old Goa aimed to awe the local population into conversion and to impress upon them the superiority of the foreign religion. The facades were accordingly made tall and lofty and the interiors were magnificent with twisted Bernini columns, decorated pediments, profusely carved and gilded altars and colourful wall paintings and frescoes. Local laterite was used in the construction of the churches which had to be plastered and finished with a lime whitewash while the trimmings were sometimes of basalt. The colour white was so identified with churches that the local administration ruled that no house could be painted that colour. The churches and convents listed in the uh, UNESCO list are Basilica of Bomb Jesus, Say Cathedral Church, Church of St. Cajetan, Convent of St. Francis of Assisi, Chapel of St. Catherine, Church of Lady of Rosary, Church of St. Augustine. Elephanta Caves, located in the state of Maharashtra, they were inscribed in the year 1987. The island of Elephanta, the glorious abode of Lord Shiv and an epitome of Hindu cave culture consists of seven caves on an island in the Sea of Oman close to Mumbai which within their decorated temples and the images of Hindu mythology bear a unique testimony to a civilization that has disappeared. The island of Gharapuri, the city of caves, situated about 10 kilometers from Mumbai on the east side of the harbour owes its name to an enormous stone elephant found there by Portuguese navigators. This elephant is today housed on the Victoria Gardens Zoo now called Jija Mata Udyan in Mumbai. The date of the famous Elephanta Caves is still much debated and varies from the 6th century to 8th century according to experts. They constitute one of the most striking collections of rock art in India. There are two groups of caves to the east Stoop Hill thus named because of small bricks Buddhist monument at the top contains two caves one of which is unfinished and several cisterns. To the west, the larger group consists of five rock-cut Hindu shrines. The main cave is universally famous for its carvings to the glory of Shiv, who is exalted in various forms and 
actions. The cave consists of a square plan mandap whose sides measures about 27 meters. A series of sculptured panels lining the walls of the caves portray images from Indian mythology, the most celebrated of which is the 20 foot high Trimurti Sadashiv, a three headed bust of Shiva in the roles of destroyer, preserver and creator emerging from a mountain. Elora Caves located in the state of Maharashtra. They were inscribed in the year 1983. These 34 monasteries and temples extending over more than 2 kilometers were dug side by side in the wall of a high basalt cliff 18 kilometers from Aurangabad in Maharashtra. Positioned in the lap of Chamdari Hills, Elora with its uninterrupted sequence of monuments dating from 600-2000 AD brings the civilization of ancient India to life. Not only is the Elora complex a unique artistic creation and a technological exploit, but with its sanctuaries devoted to Buddhism, Hinduism and Jainism, it illustrates the spirit of tolerance that was characteristic of ancient India. The 12 Buddhist caves in the south date from about 200 BC to 600 CE. The 17 Hindu temples in the center date from about 500 to 900 CE and the 5 Jain temples in the north date from about 800 to 1000. Buddhist caves, cave number 1 to 12 belong to the Buddhist period. These temples have incorporated themes of Hindu and Jain which suggests the deliberate waning of Buddhism. These caves trace their origin in the Mahayan phase of Buddhism and comprise many really striking images of Buddha. Built somewhere during 550 to 750 AD, the caves are decorated with carvings, paintings, sculptures and murals depicting the life of Lord Buddha. Cave number 10 are regarded as the important ones. The former presents typical example of Chaitya architecture and got its name from Vishwakarma, the divine architect. Cave number 12 is known for its magnificent three-story structure. Hindu caves. Following Buddhist caves, there are 17 caves, cave number 13 to 29, that embrace Hindu temples. Constructed somewhere during 600 to 875 AD, the Hindu caves are entirely imprinted with carvings and sculptures of apsaras, tree nymphs, animal motifs, trees, plants, gods and goddesses. One can see intricately carved pillars that are massive but sited proportionately to accord with the size of caves. Several pillars are plain and lack carvings. However, a large number have carved bases, brackets and grooved shafts. Cave number 16 comprises the Kailash Nath temple that is known to have the largest monolithic structure of the world. Jain caves, these are five in number, built between 800-2000 AD. Five caves from cave number 30 to 34 belong to the Jains. Again, the caves are adorned with images of the lords and various mythological pictures. Wall paintings at Elora Caves has preserved beautiful wall paintings of the bygone era. Around five caves possess such paintings, but the best preserved lies in Kailash Temple. Patepur Sikri, located in the state of Uttar Pradesh and was inscribed to the World Heritage List in 1986. Built during the second half of the 16th century by the Emperor Akbar, Fatehpur Sikri, which means the city of victory, was the capital of the Mughal Empire for only some 10 years. The complex of monuments and temples, all in a uniform architectural style, includes one of the largest mosques in India, the Jama Masjid. Babur visited the place on the eve of the Khanwa battle in 1527 
and mentioned it as Sikri in his memoirs. He founded here a garden and a Jal Mahal surrounded by the lake water and a Bauli to commemorate his victory in the Khanwa battle. Akbar, grandson of Babur, shifted his residence and court from Agra to Sikri for a period of 13 years from 1572 to 1585 to honor the Sufi saint Sheikh Salim Chishti who resided here. Akbar revered him very much as the saint had blessed him with a son who was named Salim. He raised lofty buildings for his use and houses for the public. Thus grew a great city with charming palaces and institutions. Akbar gave it the name of Fatahabad and which in later days came to be known as Fatehpur Sikri. Sikri was the first planned city of the Mughals. The efficient system of drainage and water supply adopted here suggests an extremely intelligent town planning by the Mughal emperor. The monuments of Fatehpur Sikri may be broadly classified as palace complex, darga complex, city wall with gateways, hammams, treasury, waterworks, tanks and bauli, house of noblemen, sarai and minars. Important buildings to name few are in Fatehpur Sikri are Jami Masjid, Bulan Darwaza and tomb of Sheikh Salim Chishti, Mehale Elahi, Shahi Bazaar, Meena Bazaar, Panch Mehal, Khwabga, Shahi Kutub Khana, Anup Talao, Joda Bhai's Palace, Diwane Aam are few other important buildings in the complex. Great Living Chola Temples They are located in the state of Tamil Nadu and were inscribed in the year 1987 and 2004. Great Living Chola Temples which are architectural marvels were built by kings of the Chola Empire which stretched overall of South India and the neighboring islands. The site includes three great 11th and 12th century temples, the Brihadeswara Temple at Tanjavur, the Brihadeswara Temple at Gangai Kond Cholapuram in Perambalur district and the Erateshwar Temple at Darasuram near Kumar Kumba Konam. The Temple of Gangai Kond Cholaswaram built by Rajendra I was completed in 1035 its 53 meter viman was has recessed corners and a graceful upward curving movement contrasting with the straight and severe tower at Tanjavur. The Erateshwar temple complex built by Raja Raja II at Darasuram features a 24 meter viman and a stone image of Shiv. Dear learners, we have learnt about the cultural world heritage sites of India. Thank you.